again, and welcome to Man's Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrett. And we're having all sorts of technical problems. And we got no sound. It's hi- just funny. And hi, Facebook. We Facebook, are, we, we might are be over here like this, this or like this. Like this but sorry, my sorry. tripod kind of won't It's not over. about, I know y'all just tune in just to look at our smiling faces, but um, it's really, it should be more about the content and less about our smiles. Well, yes, but, uh, but I did like our coordinated Yeah, that was great. We were <laughs> Um, so look at me. I have notes. So, so we haven't, usually we at least chat a little bit about what's coming up. I'm just following Tammy's lead. I didn't do my yoga this morning. I'm already annoyed. I'm frustrated (laughs) with the world. So I'm very happy today. I got up. I got plenty of sleep. It wasn't 3 million degrees last night. Well, I like your earrings too. Thank you. Um, I had a plan going into today and then I actually had time to like write things down which makes me happy because usually I'm all over the place and I forget to talk about the things I want to talk about so I do have a flow it's a crazy flow but I have one um in case you missed it in Sunday's paper in the city in Paul Feely City Hall article um there is discussion over lower health care costs for school board members right so this is what it says a recommendation that the manchester school district return to an 80 20 split on the cost of health insurance for school board members with the district picking up 80 percent of the cost for elected officials was sent back to committee for more discussion now the first thing the district is you the district doesn't pay for anything the taxpayers pay for everything so when they say oh the district let's just remember that means you so the way it used to work is we the taxpayers paid um 80 percent of the health insurance costs for school bo- elected school board members and um they paid 20 percent. and then about four years ago i think it was we switched it a li- up a little bit to where the taxpayer was only paying 60 percent of the cost and they were and it was supposed to inc- the cost to the uh, school committee member was supposed to increase i believe five percent every year Yep, I, I actually remember right. there being a shift, and it was because it was uh, after uh, we got Obamacare, yep. I believe it, you know, yep. healthcare costs skyrocketed. For the- <laughs> Everyone was like, oh, how did that happen? So, so going, the, the, the problem, the problem, according to specifically in this article, Nicole Leapley, which is the Ward 11 school committee member, um... Do, do, do. She, um, because she was on Obamacare, she had Affordable Care Act insurance for her, I presume, and her family of four. Okay. And even then, I'm having a hard time making the numbers make any sense because I, prior to going on Dan's insurance, also had Affordable Care Act um, insurance, and I know what the premiums were, so I, you know. And the way it works is, just just as a point of reference, uh, ACA has subsidies. Um, this amount is paid to your insurer throughout the year and reduces your monthly bill. And um, up to 400% of the poverty, federal poverty level are eligible for su- uh, uh, some large um, subsidies. Now, just in case you don't know, the federal poverty level in 2021 for a family of four was $33,130. of that would be a family of four earning of just over 132,000. So now Nicole Leapley is a family of four. Um, I do not know if she's married to the father of her children. They live in the same address. He is the founder of a company called um, Storyboard or Story something. And I, it was a thing that I didn't know. It's one of these newfangled things. He runs a company that basically helps organizations tell their story effectively to be able, I assume, to be able to raise money. So that's what he does. Now she, according to her website for when she ran for office um, and her, her Twitter, she's elected school board member. She's born in Nebraska. So that makes her a free stater. Um, (laughs) She's public school educated mom of two public school kids. She has a PhD. Let me guess. Child. No, uh, no, it was in French. Oh. And like literature, okay. Um, Twenty plus years in higher education, so she's an educated person. Although she's a free stater because she's from Nebraska, so obviously her and her husband, boyfriend, father to her children, whatever, are obviously free staters because the only thing we, you know, everybody who moves here from out of state should never be elected because unless you're born, born here, here, you're really not a real person. Right. Um, 
So anyways, she... <laughs> Which is ironic because the person who says that the most it's from Greenwich for a Day job. Progress is uh, Zandra Rice so, Hawkins, who says that all the yep. time, but who actually moved here. For a job in politics. To make this yes. state more progressive. Right. So, um, so you've got... Uh, I did Google quickly the average premiums for the America, uh, ACA. For, this is for a 40-year-old, and I realize Nicole's pushing like more towards 50, but look, this is just what bubbled up. Um, the average lowest cost bronze premium is $329 a month. This is for one person. Average lowest cost silver premium is $428. Uh, silver premium, $438. And then the uh, gold premium, $462. So that's what the non-subsidized rates on the Affordable Care Act insurance for one per person. person. That's for one so 40 for four year old. people, you're looking at 1,200-ish um, No, per it's month. never four. It's never four times. Oh, it's not? Oh, no. Oh, oh. no. No, insurance doesn't go by person. Family is always, it's just weird. But- <laughs> So she is the, here's the concern. And it's, I get the, the discussion. Prior to being elected as a school board member, she was on afford, on the Obamacare, right? So apparently she doesn't, her husband's business doesn't have health insurance. Okay, so they're going to use the taxpayer funded system. But because then she is eligible for health insurance through the city of Manchester school district, she no longer is a for gets the tax benefits of the Affordable Care. So, because the Affordable Care Act says if you have insurance through your employer, you have to take advantage of that. So she is saying um, the premiums charged by the district were substantially more, and it also meant we lost our associated tax credit. So now that's the subsidy, which she says is $10,000 a year. That comes out to $833 a month. So this family of four, who she's a PhD with 20 years in higher education, and he's a founder of their own business, was getting $833 of your money to pay for her health insurance, which now she can't get because she ran for office. So now she is saying her health insurance cost, is, she pays about $970 a month through the city. Okay. But that doesn't really make sense to me either, because if that's only, if that's... 80%. Right? So that would we make are their about 12 Well, no, that would make right? the premium $2,200. That would mean that the city's paying $2,200 for a family for... There's something woefully wrong here. But anyways, besides the fact that Nicole... Well, the government's involved, so right. I'm going to tell you at least this. So, it's going to be more expensive than it needs to be, I'm, and it's probably got 19 layers it does not need So I'm either. reading all this, and I'm thinking, okay, well, I think there's a no-brainer solution to Nicole Leapley's problem. And there's only three school committee members who are currently taking advantage of the school district's health insurance. Um, Karen DeFrancis, the chief financial officer, did say if they switched back to the 80-20 split, because that's a 40-60 split at 9-10, okay. that she doesn't know if more people would take advantage of the insurance. But anyways, the one thing that I actually uh, probably will ever agree with um, school committee member Jim O'Connell is this makes no sense. <laughs> He says, my understanding that we were made employees because it was the only way to allow school board members to avail themselves of the district health plans. The real stupidity here is it makes no sense that they're employees. I'm not one. I didn't run to be one. I answered the people of Manchester. Why in the heck are we employees in the first place? Do away with that and the problem goes away. So one, let's not make elected officials who aren't employees classified as employees and here's the real no-brainer no nicole could herself make this motion just make the motion to not have the taxpayer pay for any of school committee members health insurance at all why are we paying for health insurance for elected officials we do it for aldermen we do it for school committee and we don't have any money to do anything for the people of the city so that's my first thing. All that's right. what started this. So just in case you missed it, um, the Consumer Price Index for April 2022 came out, and the official number for 2022 was 8.3%. 8.3%. Now keep in mind that the tax cap is based on the three-year average of the Consumer Price Index. For this current budget, it's three. the tax cap, tax and spending cap is limited to only 3.57%. Now imagine that next year, once you factor in an 8.3 number, or it may be much higher by that point, that 3.5% will start going up into the 5, 6, 7%. And then the year after it, it'll be even higher. And those are how much 
every year they say, well, we can spend this money because the tax cap says we could. So in Craig's budget, in Joyce Craig's budget, which didn't include money for severance, so we know it was a fake budget, the city budget was $166 million. And the school district budget was $189 million. Um, and that's to stay within the legal requirements of the 3.57%. Now tonight, the school, uh, the alderman will vote, I believe, on the fiscal 2023 budget. And it'll be interesting to see if they think that um, squeezing 3.5% more than last year out of you, the taxpayer, is sufficient, and they'll find a way to tighten the belt like the rest of us while you're facing higher prices and higher gases and higher electric rates and food's out of control, and if, God forbid, you have a baby, you can't even find formula, or if they're going to override the tax cap yet again and tax you even more. What do you predict, Tammy? Oh, I'm going to go with they're going to override the cap. So now I want to put up a really... And so they have the votes now to do that They do, well, because right? voter vote elections have consequences, and the people of Manchester put in people who do not look at your tax bill as important. Um, I'm going to put up a really bad graphic, because it's awful, for a variety of reasons. You can't really <laughs> see what the heck that is. If you could see it better, it's part of Joyce K Craig's budget proposal. Okay. And it is a map of the city of Manchester. So that entire space is the city of Manchester. And anywhere you see those colored lines, that represents 32.9 miles of roads that will actually get attention this year. So, Next so year. the lines are roads that are going that, to be worked on. That are on. in the plan to okay. be worked on. The rest so of one, the city. So one, two, three, four, yeah. five, six, it's, seven, it's eight, not much. Nine, nine roads. So like in Ward 10, uh, basically <laughs> oh, um, South that, Main Street, which is like a disaster area. I mean, I don't know what it is about that road it's in terrible. particular, if it's because it's near the I river. I think it's got bad drainage. someone put a, a crappy road in to start. But I mean, it's like pothole yes, city Yes, it's terrible. So there are, as you know, um, there are many places if you're driving in the city of Manchester, and you can make that graphic go away now, um, <laughs> that have terrible roads. And we can all agree that when you talk to people, I mean, when you're running for city office, people have very basic needs. They want people to slow down, and they want uh, the, the producers going, Bridge Street, oh my God, <laughs> Bridge Street. It's like a, it's right? like a So people want people to slow down, um, and then they want the roads fixed. That's what people want. They want to be able to drive down the road without having to worry about- And they want about... their garbage picked up. Exactly. And I would prefer my garbage picked up without half the garbage being left behind. That too. <laughs> so in Craig's proposal, there is $2.3 million to repave 32.9 miles of road. And those are the lines that was we a just squiggly saw line. on the map. That comes out to about $700,000 a mile, which wow. is actually less than I think I had heard years ago. I think it was a million. I always have it in my head that it's a million dollars a mile. So, but that 2.3 million, when you look at Craig's overall budget proposal, which we already know is going to be lower than what they're going to pass. And, and we're at like 330 330000 oh, is the budget total, yeah, right? I'm, so I'm just going to look at the city. I'm not okay. even going to talk about the schools because it's, it confuses things. Okay. So... 1.6 million, or no, $166 million budget for the city, 2.3 million for the roads. That's 1.4% of the entire budget will go to fixing roads in Manchester. So, you wonder, well, wait, what's, where's the, what's going the 98 on? 98.6% right. so, of um, the budget. You hear a lot, and I don't, I'm not saying it's not true, that the fire department is not at a full you know, at what they need. The police are always sure. I'm just saying, there's all these things. And you think, I don't understand. We go up, our property, our spending goes up every year. Our taxes go up every year. You keep telling me we don't have money for anything now. Like it's always, it never seems to go away. And now I'm looking at the roads are abysmal in Manchester. It is bad. Bridge Street, South Beach Street, Silly Road, South Main Street, Second Street. Kelly, you know, they're, it's not just one street that you're like, wow, that street's in bad shape. It seems like everywhere you go, you're like, duh, 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 duh. city pensions, however, the, the combination of police, fire, and city, which is not school, okay. $26 million out in of, the budget out wow. of 166. 
16% of our annual budget. Mm -hmm. So when you're driving down the street every and you hit a pothole, every time you hit the pothole, I want you to go fix the pensions, fix the pensions, fix the pension, fix the pension, fix the pension. Because guess what? Those pensions are never going to allow us to do the things and the city side of our budget that we need to. Fiscal well, it's also it's it's it compounds and it's cumulative in the sense that the uh, because people's longevity has improved so much. I mean, we are literally looking at people who work for thirty years and then are in pensions for forty years. Yep. I actually met a gentleman not in New Hampshire but in South Carolina where that was the case. The guy um, was uh, a fireman mm -hmm. and he retired after twenty years, I believe, yep. and he's been pulling a pension for four. Yeah. And that model is clearly not sustainable, especially not because the growth rate and the birth rate in uh, in America is actually starting to go negative. And um, I looked up last week because I was curious because you know how people spread doom and gloom and they sort of have their whatever the talking point is. So amongst other things, here's a silly example, but um, I was watching a sitcom from 2013 and they mm -hmm. made a joke about Fiji being underwater or almost underwater. And so I was like, oh, you know what? It's been like 10 years since that joke. Where is Fiji? You know, how underwater is Fiji now? Because they told us that was going to happen. Of course it's not. And all these things are alarmist and nonsense and whatever. But for those of you who, you know, have been around the block or the moon or the sun a few times now, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, everyone was talking about unfunded liabilities, meaning the pension funds, social security. This is on a national level, and of course, Tammy's talking on, on the local level, but these are the same problems. The unfunded liabilities in America, so not the 30 trillion plus dollars in debt, the actual looming social security mm -hmm. and pensions that we're supposed to be paying for is between 200 and 300 trillion, trillion. dollars. Like, like that's not even, it's, it's, not it's, it's not, funny money. Like yeah. we can't, this, all of this is nonsense. It took Venezuela 16 years to go from the richest country in South America and almost one of the richest countries in the world. They had petrol and they had a free market economy. They got a socialist in, in 16 years. There are food riots yep. currently in Venezuela and famine. And we should not think it can't happen here. This is not sustainable. No, we that's can't the reality. afford it. Pensions, I, I, anybody, I say this over and over again, anybody who's being sincere and honest or unless you're naive, who believes that public pensions are sustainable is either lying to you or they don't understand math because they are not. There is a reason why private pensions went away and were replaced with 401k type things. We went from, private companies went from defined benefit plans, which is a pension, you're guaranteeing a payment at the end, to a defined contribution plan, which says we are gonna guarantee to pay in certain amount every month, and then you figure out what to do with it at the end. Private businesses did that, and they didn't do it because they were, oh my God, they were looking for profits and all that stuff. They did it because they're not sustainable, and when companies go under, there goes people's you know retirement. For whatever reason, and I can just say two words, labor unions, um, public pensions still are the norm and they are unsustainable. Just to put it in short term, because like, how bad of a problem is this? All right. So for, for the new budget, and I assume this number is gonna be accurate because the pension is the pension is the pension. It shouldn't, has nothing to do with the budget. You know what I mean? It's the number. So the fiscal 23 budget number is $26,108,833. Last year, it was 25723 833, which no, it was only 385,000. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. That's not that much of a, that's not true. Yeah, no, it is. Cause that's a three. So it wasn't a huge. I was like, that's only $400,000, which by the way, would be almost a mile of road. But then I thought, well, let's look a little bit further because one year to the next might not have a big thing. Five years ago, 
Not long. Oh, but and I can tell you what one year to the next is because they did all these secret contracts yep. during COVID yep. when no one was furloughed and they didn't shut down the city, but they somehow managed to meet and do all these secret so contracts. In, lest in, we forget that part. Just five years ago, fiscal year 2018, the pension liability that we were, you, the taxpayer, were re obligated to pay whether you can afford to or not was $7.3 million less a year. Mm. That's, a, that's a lot of money for no return. There is no pothole being filled with that extra $7.3 million. There is no extra trash pickup. There is no street cleaning. There is no extra the snow plow. not even open it's, when people want to use it's it. It's just literally more money that you, the taxpayer, must spend whether you like it or not regardless of who you elect. The budget itself can be manipulated and things can be caught and you know, whatever. The pension liability until the point that somebody has the wherewithal to say, this can no longer work and we have to find a solution. And from a personal perspective, I don't care if it has to be a 20 year solution. There has to be a solution. If you say, Everybody in the system, because I'm not trying to screw anybody out of the right. pension. If the people were actually trying to prevent someone relying on the fact that they're going to get you know, that money okay and then with... there's a bankruptcy <laughs> and then people are like, now we're you know, literally SOL. For whatever reason, he got there, you know, Alderman from Ward 9, Jim Burkish, he can continue to get his $150,000 of taxpayer money every year in his pension. The, he was promised that he's retired at, you know, whatever young age he is. Um, he'll probably get another job and make more money, but that's okay because that's what he was promised. Now, the new people coming in, they're the ones who are probably going to feel the pinch because you're going to have to make some sort of shift to a 401k, uh, you know, defined contribution plan. And that will mean that maybe for a while there won't be very much in matching dollars from the taxpayer until eventually all those pensioners die off and that liability goes away. Now, the unions will tell you that it can't be that, you can't make it work that way. I've had conversations with Jeff Goley a million times, but Tammy, you don't understand, if we don't keep putting money in, we won't be able to pay the people we've promised. And I'm like, that's why it's called <laughs> unsustainable. So but rather- That is literally, that <laughs> is the problem. So someone is literally saying, oh, well, we stole the money to pay other things, so now we gotta expose, uh, exploit these people over here in order to fill that hole yep. and and then they go and and so yep. we did all of this wrong let's keep doing it more wrong yep. and all we're saying is guys somebody's got to fix it much like we said you know shutting down the economy is going to have bad consequences mm. turns out ooh, it does so i don't i'm anybody who is watching this um the alderman i believe our meeting tonight tonight is tuesday the 17th um to vote on the budget and if it's not tonight it has to be because there's it's a third Wednesday or third Tuesday of the month, and I think it has to be voted on before June first. So um, you can tune in there on local access and see how badly they want to screw you. But it, seriously, to try to put it into perspective, seven hundred thousand dollars for one mile of road repair. It is tonight. I'm hearing. So, uh, so tonight you can go down to City Hall. You meet me down there. I'm going to go down and speak my three minutes. Um, but every time you hit a pothole, I want you to remember that if we fix the pensions, there would be money. 7.3 million would be 10 miles of road in one year in addition to what we already do. So imagine if a third of the road repairs that we're doing now, we added another third every year instead of just paying into the pension fund that is woefully broken and unsustainable and you are forced to pay for it what? And I can't deal with that. But thank you, Nicole Leafly, for you know setting up, lighting a fire under me about the this whole thing because so, oh, I so wrote down numbers now. We, we have a couple of minutes left, so so let's also parse out what could be other solutions to this. So one of the things I think we should be thinking about as a city is what if these services can be privatized? Maybe a hundred years ago, there was a reason why it had to be a uh, government-owned trash collector right mm -hmm. or now it's probably like outsourced but we're still sort of paying you know well so so the question becomes are there possibly 
solutions here that we're just not even thinking about that we should be thinking about by way of example why can't the, the, the road plowing be privatized, right? Like I feel like there are solutions out there that we can start to look at. And if it is privatized, then those people who are doing the hard work get the benefit so, and they get paid and then they can decide how to invest their I, money to create their own wealth in the future instead of relying on everyone else in a system that is unsustainable so I and sucks. do agree that we should look at alternative ways of doing things. I don't think repeating the same thing over and over again just because it's the way we do it is has to be the only way. Now, in defense of trash pickup as an example, um, when Ted Gatsis was first elected mayor, he, um, I sat on a board with, for him um, about efficiencies and whatnot, efficiencies and consolidations to try to find ways to make things run smoother. And I was very surprised to learn. Now, granted, that's, you know, probably 12 years ago. I don't know, 2010, yeah, 12, 12 years, years ago. ago. Um, I was surprised at that time to learn that they had put a, a request for proposal out for the trash to say like Pennard Waste or Waste Management or whatever. And they also had the highway department do their but their proposal. And at that point, it was actually more affordable to have the city do it than to sub it up. But oh, no, but see, if you also have access to all the numbers, it's very easy well, to I mean, come that, in with the best deal. Well, no, I mean, <laughs> the, the budget was the budget. What it was costing on paper was what it was. So, I mean, I'm not... I'm not saying that that 12 years later that that might not be that might not be the case anymore and it's always good to look to make sure that you're not just doing it the least affordable way possible or the least quality way possible. Well, and um, also in those kinds of scenarios, you actually have to compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges. The question becomes, was it factored in? Was the pension factored in? I don't know. Was the whatever factored in? Because I think if you go head right. to head with apples to apples, the free market is probably so. going to be the I definitely would think so. I'm just going to say if, you know, if on paper, it is more affordable to keep it in the city. I don't have a problem with that. But I don't think we're do that. I don't think we actually compare the numbers and look at what we're what we could do differently. And I know certainly for the 180 million for the schools that we didn't even talk about yeah, that, that couldn't keeps even go going there. up and up and up while enrollment goes yep. down and down and down yep. is well, an issue. So one of the reasons why I didn't talk much about the schools is because when I looked at the budget breakdown there was no single line item for pensions. So I'm assuming it's part of the $57 million in employee benefits. But I don't know that because I couldn't figure out their bud so the school district's budget. So a third of the budget is benefits? I don't know. A yes. third oh, yeah. of the school budget is benefits. Oh, yeah. We'll just end there because I think we're out of time. Yeah. A third so, of the school budget. That's all I got. Is um, benefits. <laughs> I believe it's Saturday, June 4th is the... Animal shelters, plant sale, mark yep. that on your calendar, make your yard pretty. Um, hot, hot this weekend, 90 degrees. If you didn't get your air conditioners in or like me getting central air installed, uh, you might want to put them in before the weekend because it is going to be a little warm. Uh, that's all we got for this week. If you have any questions, manchtalk at gmail.com. Uh, you can watch this on local access on YouTube and on Odyssey. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye.